Hello and welcome to this week's episode of In The Bunch, the world's fastest moving cycling magazine show. As you guys well know, as always, we travel a many, many kilometers to bring you the latest news in the world of cycling. Local professionals, internationally based, come and scoop the big prizes of the 94.7 Cycle Challenge. The e-bike is here to stay and grow. DC, the double century, saw records fall in the men's and women's competitions, blistering 430 for the win in the men's. Then, on the world of signing contracts, two new pros will actually be based abroad in 2018, riding in international pro teams. On the local front, uh, the Sunland Mountain Bike Invitational, victory for two youngsters, and a big win that was on their careers too. Across to Rwanda up in Africa, the plans go very wrong to end up going really right. Daryl Impey came back to win a critical event in his career, one of the two majors that he's finally cracked as his own. He feels it's vital to win on domestic front. Uh, you know, the cyclists know me, but not everybody else. So I think it's important to show face. Um, I think it's also important to um, be as a bit of a role model for the young guys um, and show them that the, the difference of um, level they'll be racing at. Um, I think that's quite important, and it's a nice opportunity for the for the young guys to actually race against a guy that races the Tour de France, races abroad, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit kind of giving back in a way, how you can if you can put it that way. But uh, it's just nice to be on home soil and uh, racing here as well. Daryl certainly was in great form in the 94.7, going away with the big guns at about 40 kilometres, whittling down the field a la Agatha Christie to be a solo victor. That's of course in his off season. So it was just basically to see where I'm at, um, you know, form-wise, condition-wise, just to test myself a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's important. It's, it's, it's still important for me to win here because, you know, a lot of guys use me as the benchmarks. Well, Daryl, of course, the benchmark for many and uh, the benchmark event for many in the world is the Cape Town Cycle Tour. You can win five tours de France. The guy at the boardroom table will still say, but what was your fastest time in the Argus, as these guys call it. That will still has to win that big one. But a rider who had a great ride in the 94-7, Eddie Van Heerden, a youngster, run up last year and this time had to watch on. Our Daryl rode away from him, but just got beaten in the dash to the line by Calvin Bjerneke for second. Firstly, I wasn't, wasn't expecting a podium at all. Um, I was just um, expected to, to ride for the team and try to get a win for the team. And yeah, the, ride, the race actually turned out quite differently. Um, getting a surprise podium, um, which I'm grateful for. Well, there's no such a thing as a surprise podium, I can assure you of that. But what was surprising is that Eddie van Jordan suffered a serious heart condition, inflammation, in fact, of his heart, coming out of the best method of Good Hope in March. Prognosis was between five weeks and nine months off the bike, and he's bounced right back. But we spoke about e-bikes at the outset of our show in the menu. And of course, Ilko Moyes, the rider that first discovered this very fast-moving bicycle in Monaco, of all places, was the guinea pig in this 94.7, rode the race. And I think the country's majors will soon all have an e-bike category one way or the other. Transcape's already committed to that. And a couple of the retailers told me last year they couldn't give away an e-bike before the 94.7. This year they've had so many requests, it was staggering. That's the difference between last year and this year. So the growth is pretty fast. Well, that's not surprising, Yulko, because I can assure you as riders get older and maybe a little bit less capable, they need many more watts to come from plugging in to the wall to improve their time. So the e-bike, that is a fixture to stay. The Active Bodies team in Double Century certainly didn't need an e-bike, it sounded like it. So all they took, 4 hours 30 for 202 kilometers at 45 k's an hour. Star-studded team, Chris Eurster, Bradley Potfitter seems to have been the driving force there, Clint Hendricks in there as well, and they broke the record in the men's. Exactly what happened in the women's too, they took 20 minutes off the record, a 30-minute winning cushion by the team led by Bianca Holtzkamp, it included Hazel McGill, it's just a new signing for the best met women's team in 2018. Delighted with a victory, of course. We have the fastest time ever, I think, by 20 minutes as well. When we came across the line, half of us were like breaking down in tears, and <laughs> it was quite emotional. The Aussies, you'll find that everywhere on the world cycling circuit, that in many, many teams sprinkled across. South Africa is starting to really become much like that, with our own dimension data for Quebec, a team filled with South Africans, but our footprint is widening. Willie Smith, or Willie Smurfy as he's called, on his Twitter handle, 
has just signed for Katusha Alperson, one of the World Tour teams. Brendan Davids is a youngster that was in 2016 still a mountain biker, didn't get picked to go to Rio as a mountain biker, moved across to a roadie and has dominated the road scene. Won two tours, one in Malaysia, one in Australia, and now he's been signed by the Benelong Swiss wellness side to race down under. Fantastic opportunity for him. So really well done to the South Africans on that front. Two youngsters, Rousseau Becker and Robert Robson, recently dominated the Sunlam MTB Invitational. Half of that team, Robert Robson's had the best year of his short mountain bike career in 2017, winning three big events. The Buke Okaruda Coast, arguably the biggest single day mountain bike race in the country, that went to him. He was the winner of the Sunlam MTB Invitational, as we mentioned, but he rates the one that counts in 2017 as his victory with Eddie Clannans, his all-time hero in the mountain bike ride to nowhere. I mean, when I started cycling, the first pro I ever heard of was Eric Clanons, and he literally physically spoke to me personally saying, I'd like to do an event with you, are, are you keen to join me? And that, for me, was really awesome to have sort of someone that I looked up to when I started cycling to say, do you want to join me for an event, which was quite crazy. And then being able to win all three stages and the overall of Ride to Nowhere with him was pretty cool, and learning and everything that I learned from him was amazing. Well, in the bunch, like many people thought, Kent Main was the form rider for the recent Tour of Rwanda. But the team's plans went very wrong to, in fact, end up very right. What happened there, Joseph Araruya winning the first of the road stages, Metkel Ayob going on to win two of the road stages. Main ended up as a helper of the team, as did the young Stier van der Bod. But nevertheless, a sweet result for the team. I don't know, maybe if I'd been in his position and I'd won the first stage, maybe things would have been the other way around. But yeah, I got close to that um, on a couple other stages where I was in a select move of five or six guys, but once again committed to the team. Um, so yeah, I'm not disappointed with my results to be, I think, three times in the top 10 and finishing 11th on the general classification. But definitely, and I know I could have been better. Well, a great result, as you can hear there in the Tour of Rwanda for the boys in black and shocking green. That's, of course, dimension data for Quebecer. Now, looking at the world of cycling can be as cruel as what it can be kind to these professional riders. Take Metcal Ayub, for example. Fabulous career. Great 2017. Second in this tour and out of a contract in 2018. Our producers thought we should get a little black pen out, sign a couple of these riders, at least keep them in the bunch at the very worst. Now looking at what's hot in the world of cycling, what's hotter and what's the darn hottest of them all. In third position, that recent opening of the ASG Luxury Cycling Store. Opened by the legend Phil Liggett himself, well worth a visit to go and see what they pack. In second wheel, the record-breaking double century. 430 for the win, I still can't believe it. Right atop the podium though, DDDD, the 94.7 cycle challenge. All the road closures, big news, Ashley Mormontasio winning the women's race, coming from abroad and right on top of the podium, Daryl Impey, the king of 2017. Please remember you can find links to the stories we've covered here in as well as to many, many others on inthebunch.co.za. That'll be in the description right below. If you've enjoyed the show as much as what we've done doing it for you, do not forget to subscribe to the show and of course to tap our bell. Should this be the last time in 2017 that you might be joining us, please enjoy your festive season. Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, please, please drive carefully and do not drink when you drive. This is also the season of LSD. But not the way you think it might be. This is long, slow distance on the bike. Doing a lot of that will bring you back a better ride in 2018 than what you've been. Johnny Kun, on behalf of Kutsia, host the entire In The Bunch team saying, have a fantastic break. We look forward to being with you next year.